All right, before we move on, I want to make sure we understand two important concepts in environmental economics and policy. The first is cost-effective emissions control or cost-effectiveness. And cost-effectiveness is very simple. It's reaching something, in this case an emissions target, in the cheapest way possible, in the least cost way. Efficient emissions control, which we spent quite a bit of time on, is the level of emissions that maximizes the net benefits to society. Recall, that's the point where the marginal abatement costs equal the marginal damage. It's that balancing act. And importantly, efficiency implies cost effectiveness. You can't have an efficient policy unless you reach that, that goal or that target in the least cost way. But cost effectiveness does not necessarily imply efficiency. So you could have an environmental policy that's not based on efficiency, but could be based on something like equity concerns. And whatever that environmental target is, you could still reach that in a cost-effective way. The first set of policy options we'll consider in this course are called command and control. And in reality, most of the environmental policy and experience with environmental policies we have in this country are command and control policies, starting with the Clean Air Act in the 1970s. This is an approach to public policy in which regulators, like the government, whether state or federal, stipulate the action or an individual that an individual firm or polluting facility, like a plant, can take with regard to pollution control or, an, or other environmental factors of protection. Though the firm may have some limited flexibility in some cases in how it meets the regulatory requirements. There are kind of two basic types of command and control. One is technology standards. We have some familiarity with this as well in the case of sulfur dioxide as a pollutant generated through the uh, generation of electricity. Um, firms are required, are required to install what we informally call a scrubber, but a piece of technology in the end of pipe in the exhaust system to, to capture some emissions. The type I want to talk about today and concentrate on is performance standards. And performance standards are essentially where a regulated entity cannot emit beyond a threshold level of emissions. Those are the types we're going to talk about today. And like I mentioned, emission standards or command and control policies more generally uh, are kind of ubiquitous in our, the way that we regulate and protect the environment in the United States. And if you're interested, you could click on this link here, stationary sources or new source performance standards or standards across different uh, uh, sectors and industries that the Environmental Protection Agency has. More recently, in the Biden administration's current, or what was, what was signed into law, the Inflation Reduction Act, began as the Build Back Better plan. And there are similarities between what was actually we end up with when we start. Uh, the, and the, the basic goal for both is to reduce greenhouse gases to kind of meet the requirements in the Paris Agreement or cut emissions essentially by 50 to 52% by 2030 relative to 2005 levels. Now, the initial plan had things like tax credits that, that we, 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 we certainly got from the Inflation Reduction Act, infrastructure investments, a lot of like grants funding for, for research and, and, and other types of, of grants, but it also had sector-specific performance standards, like the ones I'm talking about today. Now, ultimately, in the Inflation Reduction Act, that didn't loom as large. And so there are some instances of performance standards, but for greenhouse gas emissions in general, what was enacted into law was more about tax credits and certain tweaks to decrease the price of, of making changes or switching fuel sources. So a major problem with emission standards or command and control regulation more generally is that there is almost always an overwhelming tendency for regulators to apply the same standards to all sources. Here's an example from California on power plant emissions. The standard level is established at 1,100 pounds of carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide equivalent per megawatt hour. And so that's the same standard for all firms in California. So what I want to do now is use a simple example of two firms. We're going to look at kind of two policies. One will be in a uniform emissions standard, command and control, to reach an environmental target. 
we're going to look at the cost associated with getting there. And then we're going to look at that same standard, that same target, environmental target, and we're going to look at what it would require to reach that in a cost-effective manner. How do we do it in the cheapest way possible? And that's where we're going to look back to our equal marginal principle. So let's begin. The two firms have marginal abatement costs, firm one, 20 minus E1, and E1 is the emissions level of firm one. And firm two is 20 minus 2E2. Again, E2 is the emissions level of firm two. So what's the aggregate unregulated level of emissions? One of the easiest ways to see this is to graph these two functions. Firm one, firm two. Okay, so I graphed these two functions. You can see that firm one, you know, if you've kind of forgotten how to do this or it's been a while, you just plug, take your marginal abatement cost and you plug in zero for Mac and then you can solve for E and then plug in zero for E and you can solve for Mac. Uh, so it's very simple. Um, so then I have uh, my marginal abatement cost for firm one. And we can see right away that the unregulated level of emissions for firm one is 20. And the unregulated level of emissions for firm two is 10. And so the unregulated level of emissions in aggregate is 30 units, okay? And this provides a baseline. So now we're gonna kind of clean up our act where we're gonna reduce the emissions by some level. So let's suppose that the regulator wanted to control emissions from the unregulated level of 30 to 15 units. And to do so, the regulator imposes a uniform emission standard, command and control policy. And that is, each firm is given the same emissions limit of 7.5 units. So that S superscript is standard. And from one and two, we're gonna have the same standard. Let's say they comply with it. And so we know that the, the aggregate is gonna be 15 units. So the question is, what's the total abatement cost? What's the cost of reaching the uniform emission standard of 15 units? Let's go back to our graph. All right, so now I have in the graph the 7.5, and this is the emission standard for both firms, if it's uniform. And I can right away see where this intersects on the horizontal axis. This is my marginal abatement cost. The marginal abatement cost at 7.5 units is 5 for firm 2. Right, I'm just plugging in 7.5 for E2. And 12.5 for firm one. So they have different marginal abatement costs. To answer the question at hand here, we need to calculate this area. This is the total abatement cost for each firm. The total abatement cost for firm one is one half, 12.5, that's the base times the height, 12.5, which is $78 and 13 cents. Use your calculator right there. And then the TAC, the total abatement cost for firm two is one half a base of 2.5 times a height of five, which is $6 and 25 cents. And so in total, the, the total abatement cost for both firms is $84 and 38 cents. We're going to Commit that to memory, we'll go back because we're gonna compare that cost to the cost effective or the cheapest way to reach 15 units of emissions. So we're move on to this next question. What's the cost effective allocation of emissions of abatement responsibilities across the two firms? In other words, how do we abate down to 15 units of emissions in the cheapest way possible? And we need to remember the equimarginal principle. That says, to reach a target in the cheapest way possible, in a cost-effective way, the marginal abatement costs of all firms need to be equal at their choice of emissions. So given that, we have kind of solved this. We have two equations, really. We know that E1 plus E2 has to equal 15 units. That's the first equation. 
The second equation is that I know that the Mach 1 has to equal Mach 2. That's the equimarginal principle. So I can rewrite that one as 20 minus E1 will equal 20 minus 2E2. So their marginal damping costs will need to be equal to do this in a cost-effective way. And then I can switch, I can recognize that I have 20 on both sides and do a little bit of this action that E1 is going to equal 2E2. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. One thing I'm going to do is rearrange this to say E1 is e going to equal to 15 minus E2. I'm just rearranging terms. And then I can take this thing, plug it in here, and I can solve for E2, and then I know, given E2, what E1 will be. And so let's do that, right? Two equations, two unknowns. So now it's 15 minus E2 is equal to 2E2. 15 equals 3E2. E2 would equal 5, which means that E1, to get to 15, would equal 10. And this is the cost-effective split of emissions responsibilities between the two firms. All right? Firm 1 emits 10 or abates 10, right? Start over 20. And firm 2 emits 5 or abates 5. So finally, what's the cost-effective allocation? Let's think about what is the total abatement cost now. We're going to compare it to $84.00 and 38 cents. So I've amended the graph now with the cost-effective emissions responsibilities between the two firms. And you can see that the marginal abatement cost at their choice of emissions are both 10. Right, I'm just plugging in 10 and 5 into marginal abatement cost 1 and 2. And so the we can see right away that, well, we forced it, right? That the equimarginal principle holds. So the cost of reaching 15 in this case should be cheaper than our $84.38. Indeed, it will be. Total abatement cost for firm 1 is 1 half 10 times 10, which is 15. The big ones. Sorry about my penmanship here. And the total abatement cost for firm two is 10 times 5, 10 to 1 half. So that's 25 big ones. And in total, we get there with 75. Right? And we compare that to. $84.38. Of course, it's lower because this is the cheapest way to reach that target of 15. So what's the point here? And well, note, first off, note that the marginal abatement costs are equal at the choice of the mission, but the total abatement costs are not equal. Only at the margin. The, here's the point. If firms have different marginal abatement costs, and for the most part, they will, a uniform emissions standard or command and control regulation will not be cost effective. You'll be wasting resources in the sense in, in society's eyes. And if a policy is not cost effective, of course, it cannot be efficient.